the agape love, what it does not do. It doesn't do this, it doesn't do that. Why does it say that? Because you can clearly identify whether you are walking in love or not. Whether your life is walked in love or not. You can clearly tell. You don't have to be confused because love is not a feeling. It's not a sentiment. See, by the verse 9 and 10, where he explains verse 8, reveals to us the nature of the law. See, this is the problem. A lot of people don't understand the nature of the law. So there are people that say, the law must be thrown out completely. We don't need the law today. Throw it out. Throw out the Old Testament. That's Old Testament. And even though new, they don't like all of it, you know. Because how would they like 1 John 2 to 4 where he's talking about loving one another and it's all right if he talked about loving one another but every time he talks about loving one another he says this is a commandment we have received from him. They don't like commandments these days. you know. Oh, don't tell me commandments, brother. We don't like commandments. We want love. We want grace. No commandments. How many times? You read chapter 2 to 4 and count exactly how many times it says this is the commandment that I received from the Lord. John still in the New Testament, and John is writing well near 100 years of age. He's, he's a grand old man. <laughs> it's been some time since Jesus 
left and went back to heaven and the church has been in existence. But John is thinking about loving one another in terms of a commandment. Nothing less than a commandment. Obviously here he hasn't heard some of our preachers, I think. He thinks of it as a command. He said, God has commanded like that. It's a commandment I've received from him. How many times he says, it's a commandment I've received from him. So the nature of the law is understood when you understand verse 9 and 10. That's why I want to spend some more time on it the next week and all, and all that. But let me do it a little bit today. What is the nature of the law? If you want to understand the right nature of the law, you need to understand that law never stands alone. You see, the law was never given so that you have 10 pieces of injunctions, you know, orders, you know, don't do this, do this. No, it was never given like that. Law is detailed expression of love. Law is basically love expressed in 10 different ways. The Ten Commandments is love shown and expressed in 10 different ways. That's what the Ten Commandments are all about. That is why Paul understands it like that also. He says, if you love one another, then you fulfilled all the law. And then he lists the five, the last five commandments of the Ten Commandments and says, all of these and any other commandment you wish to bring in are all fulfilled by loving your neighbor, he says. This is his understanding. This is his interpretation. He interprets it very similar to what Jesus did. Why? Because he sees the relationship between the law and love. The two cannot be separated. Some people look at it, law as only a law, so they become legalists. Some people look at love only as love, so they've become the other type, you know. Just like Martin Luther said, Christians are like people who travel on a horse. They fall either to the left or to the right. We have the leftists and the rightists. That's why they never get anywhere. They go to one extreme or the other. You know. So what is Paul saying? He says there is a relationship between the law and love. Some people, you know, the modern day, in the modern day thinking, people immediately disassociate law from love. If there is law, there is no love. If there is love, there is no law. This is the way they think. But Paul doesn't think like that. He thinks that law is love. And Jesus thinks law is love. The Ten Commandments is nothing but the expression of love. He says, which is the greatest commandment? He said, love the Lord your God. Love your neighbor. It's about love, Ten Commandments. A new commandment I give unto you. What is this new commandment? Is something fresh, new? No, it's the same thing. But now, since I've told you the meaning of it and its association with love and its relationship to love, I tell you, this is a new commandment because you have a new understanding of it now. Same commandment. He says, new commandment I give. What is the new commandment? Nothing new. Love one another as I have loved you, he says. So, what does Paul reveal about this? Paul says, basically, We should always be concerned not with the letter of the law, but with the spirit of the law. That's the way the law must be looked. Look that. That is the meaning of verse 9 and 10. He says, these are the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. If there's any other commandment, or they're all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. How can that be possible? How can all this be summed up in that one commandment? He says, it will be when you do what I say, he says. Don't look at these commandments as letter, letter of the law, but look at them as the spirit of the law, he says. In 2 Corinthians 3, 6 says, the letter killeth. That's exactly what Pharisees preaching was doing for the people, killing people. Have you heard legalistic teaching? Legalistic teaching kills people. What is legalistic teaching? Legalistic teaching is teaching law without love. With law without relating it to love. 
law without showing, teaching law without showing its relationship to love and how it's only an expression of love. Legalism is leaving out the law, I mean, leaving out love and teaching only the law. Don't do this, do this, and so on. That's what legalism is all about. Nobody came to the Pharisees' meeting. They were jealous at Jesus because all the sinners were to Jesus' meeting. Hello. All the sinners went to Jesus' meeting. The other day I told you about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was very eager to just watch Jesus and hear him. What kind of message was Jesus preaching? Some people think he, mess, he, he preached a message where there was no law, only love. No, he had a message which preached law and love in relationship to one another. He preached the message of love showing how love will express itself as the law says. If you love, then you will not steal. If you love, then you will not murder. If you love, you will not commit adultery. If you love, you will not covet. If you love, you will not bear false witness. If you love, you will not do the things against others that harm them. If you love, you will not do it. So what the commandment is teaching is not about do's and don'ts. That's wrong, you see. To view the commandments as something that teaches do's and don'ts is wrong. The commandments, the function of the commandment is not to teach us do's and don'ts. The function of the commandment is to teach us love and how to live in love. That's the way you can use it in the New Testament, you see. The Pharisees misunderstood the whole thing. The, you know, they, they thought when Jesus was here, you know, they were of the mind that the commandments, by doing them, they can be saved. So Paul comes down against it. It's not by the works of the law, but by faith. Salvation is not by the works of the law, but by faith. He was very right, because these fellows are saying, I can be saved by doing the good works, by doing what the law says. But the problem is, nobody, without salvation, nobody can do the, what the law says. They're incapable of doing what the law. You have to have a new nature. You have to have, you have to become a different person to do what the law says. Right? That he is correcting in so many places. But after you become a Christian, you're a believer. What about the law? How do you use the law in your life? The law is an expression of God's love that flows from you. You do, you do and act according to the law. Why? Not because these are rules that you follow. Because you live by the law of love. And love covers all these things. This is the way it must be understood. The law was never given in a negative manner. Don't do this, don't do that. No, not like that. God, law was always given in a positive manner. In the sense that it was given to promote love. It is given to teach how to live by love and so on. That is the way the New Testament has applied the law. When it comes to the New Testament, it applies the law in that way. The law cannot save you. The law cannot, uh, you know, make you worthy before God. No. The law is simply an expression of God's love working through you and in you. That's what the law, uh, the, that's what love uh, and law works together. That's how love and law work together. So, the details of the law, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten laws. The details of the law. Or even more than ten, there are many other laws. If you read Romans chapter 12 from verse 9 onwards. There in the New Testament, Paul comes up with so many things. It looks like law. And I say, don't do this, do this. Be like this, don't be like that. Totally he's giving all kinds of injunctions. He's saying, be like this, don't be like that. Full of instructions like that. So what are the details about? The details are simply expressions of what happens when you walk by love, when you walk in love, right? That's what the details are about. Now, there some people take it, you know, and go off on a tangent. When you say that all these detailed laws, these five laws that Paul mentions here and any other law that there is, all are covered under this one law, Love your neighbor. 
when you say that, people say, all right, then forget about all the other laws. Let's have only the law of love. And forget about all the details. Don't tell me the details, but just give me the main point, the love that, how, that I must love. We don't want details, but we want just love. Love has come to replace the details. Love has come so we can throw out the details. Who needs details? We are in the New Testament. We don't need detailed instruction about do this, do don't, don't do that, and so on. Let's talk about love, they say. But the thing is, God is so good. He knows that if he said love, you don't even know where to begin and what to do, right? If you looked at your child, suppose your child is going on an excursion for four or five days, sending him to, say, Delhi or something like that. You're very concerned. How is this boy going to manage? So you start two, three days before he leaves, you know, say, be a good boy, right? Now, let me ask you, would you just say, be a good boy and leave him alone with that? Not me. I don't think any of you will leave him like that. You'll say, be a good boy, and then you will have a list of things. Make sure you do this. Make sure you don't do that. And the list will go on and on and on, and then we are sleeping at night. You remember something, say, my God, I got to tell him before he leaves tomorrow, you know. And in the last minute, say, remember, I'm telling you for the second time, for the third time, I've told you 10 times, don't do that. Do this, be like this, be a good boy. But you always give the details, why? You're not against him, you are his, not his enemy, you don't hate him, you're not trying to burden him with loss, you're trying to protect him from disaster, you're trying to save him from all kinds of troubles, right? Because of love, you're giving these details because be a good boy is not enough. He doesn't know what it means to be a good boy. He'll do some blunder and then come and tell you, you didn't tell me anything about that. Well, I told you be a good boy. Well, I didn't know it included this. <laughs> so we always give details. Even these guys that say we don't need details today. Even these preachers that say today we are living in the age of love and so on. We don't need these details. Don't tell us all this. You know, how do they do it to their children? If their children are going on vacation, I'm sure they'll give details. Hello, <laughs> are you there? They'll give great details, my friend. And our God is far better than you and I. <laughs> He's very much interested in details because he knows that, you know, we can be very foolish sometimes. <laughs> We can just be stupid sometimes and do things thinking that this is all right, that is all right. So he says, listen, don't do that. That's not good. Don't be like this. Don't be getting into this. Don't do that. Do this, do it this way. I thank God for the details. These laws are not burdensome things for me. And for any Christian, the laws are not burdensome if you understand in the wrong way. When I read this instruction, I feel the love of God coming toward me, telling me to live safely and to go about navigating through this life in a safe way, taking a safe path, be protected and be careful so that I can have success, that I don't get derailed in the way, that I don't make a blunder and I don't fail. He cares about me. He wants to instruct me. That's the way I look at the, the laws are delight to us. The psalmist understood that, read the psalms, you know, he says, it's a delight to me. Oh, it's like honey in my mouth, he says. Oh, they are so wonderful. If I just, if any man is, blessed is the man, he says, who meditates on the word of the Lord day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters whose leaf shall not wither. He'll give his fruit in his season. And whatever he does shall prosper, he says. He appreciates the law. He appreciates the commandments of God. He appreciates every injunction. He appreciates everything that God tells him to help him out to live his life successfully. So, the details 
Don't be scared about details. Details are God enabling you to express this love in particular ways, in particular situations. That is why the details are given. Read Romans chapter 12, there's a lot of details. It is given like that. So some people don't want any details, they want only love. The Pharisees are the exact opposite kind. See the other extreme. The two extremes. One is they want no details, they want only love. Let's love, brother. But what is love? They don't know. You see, but the details will tell you immediately what love is and how love works. Because James says, faith without works is dead. Why did he say that? Because some people say, I got faith. I don't need any work. I got faith. I know it. He says, no, no, no. If you got faith, show me your works. Show your faith by your works. If you don't have works to show it, show, then you don't have faith. Don't tell me you have faith. Show it by your works. Right? So similarly, if you have love, then show it. Show it by how that love expresses itself in these various details. In what it does. What love does and what love does not do. 1 Corinthians 13, for example, tells us what love does not do. Right? The agape love, what it does not do. It doesn't do this, it doesn't do that. Why does it say that? Because you can clearly identify whether you are walking in love or not. Whether your life is walked in love or not. You can clearly tell. You don't have to be confused. Because love is not a feeling. It's not a sentiment. So there is one group that says, yeah, we need love, don't want details. Forget about the details. The other group says, we need details. Forget about love. That's the Pharisees. They were angry with Jesus because everybody was going to Jesus' meeting. The sinners were going to Jesus' meeting. Tax collectors were going to Jesus' meeting. Prostitutes were going to Jesus' meeting. <laughs> uh, Zacchaeus... Jesus saw Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, come down. I want to come to your house. And the whole town went, my God, what nonsense is this? This man is going to the tax collector's house. He's a guy who's looted everybody, taken bribe from everywhere, living a life so bad. He wants to go into his house. Look at Jesus. He just goes into his house. He didn't say, Zacchaeus, commandment number one. Let's go through it now. No, he never said that. He just went into the house. I don't know what happened to the guy. The guy said, I'll give half of everything I give, I have to the poor. Four times as much as I've taken unjustly from others, I'll return it. Just like that. If a man reaches into his pocket and comes out with money and gives it to you, that means something has happened to him. I can tell you that. He said, half of my wealth I'll give to the poor. If I've taken anything unjustly, I'll give it back four times, he says. Jesus never uttered a word. Just went in there. And the man is blurting out all these things. I tell you something, that is the kind of impact that the gospel of Jesus Christ will have in this country. Amen. It is not about preaching some kind of a legalism. What Jesus expressed was love. That is what drew Zacchaeus to Jesus. Here is a man that walked according to the law, perfect, never made one mistake. According to the law, totally perfect, 100% perfect. But never condemned a person. His message came forth with full of love. They brought him a woman, said, be caught her in the act of adultery. Moses' law says stone her and kill her. This is how they approach the law, the Pharisees. This is the way they do things. How would you like to go to their church? Hello. Caught a woman and they say, Moses' law says stone her and kill her. We brought her. If you went to a Pharisee's church, there will be stoning every Sunday. And I bet on it, there are churches where stoning is happening. Stoning with words. That hurts even more. Jesus didn't have a stoning service. He had a stone throwing away service. By the time he got through, everybody threw away the stone that they had in their hands and walked away. No one condemned her. Jesus looked at her and whoever was left there should have thought, he's going to stone her for sure because this man is perfect. He, he has the authority to stone her. 
Really, he can stone her because he has no sin and he can cast the stone. He says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. What an application of the law, my friend. They are saying Moses' law says that. Jesus is saying, this is what I say about it. This is how you interpret it. Law is nothing but an expression of love. Love expressing itself. Pharisees didn't have it, you know, so they were angry at Jesus because he was gathering the crowds. Their message was a message of condemnation. His message was a message which received the people with love. Even the ones that have ruined their life, that have done wrong and have gone to waste and people that, have, that are not worthy, people that are not respected in the world came to Jesus and received love. Never once he said, whatever you do is all right. We won't look at it. No. Never did, did he once say, you go ahead and do whatever you want, live like what you want. I will receive you as well. No, never did he say. He said, go and sin no more. Amen? And God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. My heart, God is the strength of my heart. 